Dear friends, colleagues, uh, brothers and sisters, neighbors, everyone, I greet you with all the greetings that you like. Good morning, good evening, depends where you are, depending where you are. Uh, bonjour, uh, yani, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, today, our third episode with Hani Banna talks about did the miracle happen? I spoke about it on Tuesday in Arabic, so it created a lot of discussion. And today we are going to discuss it in English. I made this drawing for you. I bought it on the Facebook for people to understand what is it. Anyway, I didn't have any answer. Anyway, this uh, this is uh, a drawing which reflects the talk of today. It's made out of five components. If you talk about the two base lines, one and two, then the parallel pillars, three and four, then the top one, which is number five. First of all, let me thank my colleague uh, Aya Buzaina for helping me to organize the slideshow. Let me first of all congratulate uh, the Muslims and everyone for the new Hijri year, which is 1440 years, 1444. And I hope that this year will be peaceful and safe and prosperous for everybody, for Muslims and for non-Muslims as well. If we look at the number 14, 44, it becomes 13. You know, 13 is one of those numbers which people don't like using it. It's a bad luck number. Whenever you travel or whenever you travel in an airplane, I found there's the row number 12, there's number 14. There's no 12, 13. When I take the lift to some of the buildings or hotel, I go from floor number 12 to floor number 14. There's nothing called 13th floor. But anyway, in Islam, we don't use this because all the numbers for God, for us, are good numbers. And I'm very optimistic with 1444 as a good year for all of us, inshallah. Say Amin. This is a story which I wrote in 2005, March 2005, when I was still the president of Islamic Relief as an international or global organization. Talks about the story of a good man called Dulqarnir, a just man. If you people, Muslim, read the Surah Al-Kaf, the Kaf, as you read every Friday, you will find this story there. Let me take you by the hand to bring the principle of how the Khanin as a superpower interfered in protection and developing the local community. It's based on eight or nine points. Eight or nine points. First point, he was requested. He was requested by the local community. Because the local community knew that he is a just man. A fair man. That's why they requested somebody from his history as a just and fair man. The document which I published in 2005 called Dimensions of Global Intervention. This talks about the superpower when they come to interfere in one of the small countries, what they should do. They should follow the principles of the Khanin. So the first principle in the story of the Khanin. A request came to him from those people who couldn't be able to speak, have been attacked every year by Gog and Magog, stealing their money, their animals, uh, raping their women and taking them back and burning their fields. That's number one. But they, they requested him 
because of the knowledge of his just uh, behavior and fairness. This number one. When Zulkarnain came with the request of the local community, he protected the community. But second point was protection. First thing he did with his army to protect the community, the local and weak and vulnerable community. Third one was discussing with the local community. What can I do for you? Participatory approach. He led the community members to be participating with him in finding the solution. This number A, three, participatory approach. Number four, he started to make the needs assessment to see what do they need. Also started to discover the local wealth and local resources. When he told them, you look at these big blocks of iron on the mountain, go and bring it for me. Yep. Number four, he made needs assessment after engaging the local community with him. Then he discovered the local uh, resources. After that, with the areas protected by his army, he started to build this kind of partnership and empower and train the local community to be with him all the time. So when he came to empower the local community not to overtake or steal the resources. Then by building the wall between them and Google and Magook, he has to use a new technology, which was not used in the area, which is melting the iron, then melting the copper, then making the alloy, then building the wall. Technology, three, 4,000 years ago, which was not known to anybody else. So it was what you call technology transfer. Okay. Number seven, he built the wall to have a permanent protection of those nomads from what? From actually Gug and Magug. Then number eight, when they asked him to be rewarded, they said, no, my reward is on Allah and them leaving. So the intervention, the global intervention of the Khanin was based on fairness, justice, protection, participatory approach, needs assessment, discovering local resources, empowering local community, technology transfer, building the wall, and leaving the people no reward from them. No occupation, no stealing of resources, no hardship to the local community. This was the philosophy of the dimensions of the global intervention of the Qarnain nearly about three, 4,000 years ago. Let us talk about the drawing, which I call the initiative. This drawing have got five components. Two, one and two at the bottom, if you can see it on the drawing, make the foundation. Third and fourth, make the pillars of the building. Number five is the outcome. If we look at the drawing, which you can see it on the Facebook or some now on the Zoom, on the uh, presentation, PowerPoint. Why I'm talking about the Khanin and why I'm talking about this drawing and why I'm giving you all this heading? Because we have organized a very successful modulus of international dimension of human daily action in Istanbul between 26th and 28th of July, which is last week. Three days. First of all, the success was because of more than one element. Number one is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala support. Number two is the hard work of the volunteers who came from different countries, from Yemen, Sudan, Syria, Morocco, Saudi Arabia, UK. Then the small organization as partners. But no huge organization, no big organization, no. No. 
And this was actually the elements of success. If we go back to the drawing, which I said five components, one, two, in the foundation, three, four are the pillars, number five is the outcome. The foundations, two foundations. Number one foundation uh, is made out of what? Faith, science, learning, knowledge, experimenting, experience, diligence, and exertion. I say again, faith, science, learning, knowledge, experimenting, experience, diligence, and exertion. Eight points. What to do with these eight points? These eight points will be a part of the, the characteristic of the individual who is trying to make the social change. Trying to make the social change. He has to have faith, to have knowledge, keep learning, to be experimenting, to have experience, due diligence and the exertion, and also the knowledge of science. These are considered to be the personal personal characteristics of the people who are leading this new humanitarian social path. They cannot make your change unless you have faith, you have scientific knowledge, learning, experimenting, experience, have experience, and due diligence and the exertion. This is the character of you and me who are trying to lead this process of change at the foundation. The second foundation made of the following category. Faith again, manners, ideology, culture, values, philosophy, history, research, studies, and dogma. Faith, manner, ideology, culture, values, philosophy, history, research, studies, and dogma. This path will present the different dimensions. In our social and humanitarian work, we have the very traditional dimensions, but these are new dimensions that we need to talk about them. This path will represent the different dimensions that were neglected. I say again, that were neglected by organizations because they don't bring money. It's not fundraising tools, especially in the Arab and the Muslim organization. They don't consider these fundraising tools, which what are, what are they? I say them again. Faith, uh, faith, manner, ideology, culture, values, philosophy, history, research studies, and dogma. These are actually inside to build the character of the organization. The first six was inside the character of the individual, the second eight inside the character of the organization itself. But because they are not fundraising tools, most of the Arabs and Muslim charities are not interested in it. And give me one or two or three organizations that they invest in research studies, in culture, in values, and having manners to be taught or to be adopted by the individuals working for them. We don't invest money in this. We we'll only invest money on social or media, online, to raise funds, or making events to raise funds. Unfortunately, this made most of the organization, particularly in the Arab and Muslim area, not to invest money in these eight points. You know what happened? This became a huge civilizational challenge for us as Arabs and Muslim organization. Because the gap between this organization and the Western and Northern organization became huge, extremely huge. And the gap became very deep. And some of the analysts said that 
to measure the time distance between both groups, it could be hundreds of years. The times, the time between this group in the east and south, and this group in the north and west, the distance in time between both of them in ideology and in, in, in technology advancement could be hundreds of years. Because we only invest in the traditional, not the non-traditional. And we don't believe in science, technology, research studies, and others. This actually the build the, the, the foundation, number one and two. The building of the above floors, let me bring you back to the original drawing. These pillars, both sides, three and four. What are they about? They are the above floors, or what we call the pillars of the building structure. This is made out of two equal consistent groups. Two equal consistent groups, if we look at the slide. Each of these groups represent different paths for different dimension, having different functions. You got it? Different paths for different dimension, having different functions. Group number three, Group number three, it represents the applicable program needed to implement the required field, social, and humanitarian project. These are traditional now. We need the pillars in the group number three to do the following, to discuss field projects, different kinds of humanitarian response, capacity building programs, Structure building, different kinds of maternal response. I mentioned this human resource development, institutional governance, institutional policies and procedures, accountability, benchmarking, succession planning, building future leadership, communication, networking, bridge building, building partnership, and coalition. These are the required programs by all organizations, which is known to everyone to do it like bread and butter, which is in the first group, which is the third building, the pillar on the left-hand side. It represents the applicable program needed to implement the field, social, and humanitarian projects, field projects, different kind of humanitarian response, capacity building program, structure building, human resource development, institutional governance, institutional policies and procedures, accountability and benchmarking, succession planning, building future leadership, communication, networking, bridge building, building partnership and college. This is some of the function which we do it and we have it in our organization. Let us talk about the second group, which represent the fourth building on the right-hand side. The second group, which is the fourth building, represents the advanced community-related programs. Advanced community-related program. Advanced community-related program, which is fulfilling the contemporary requirement which is fulfilling the contemporary requirement, which is fulfilling the contemporary requirement, such as alternative media, influencers, techn technological social impact program, metaverse, risk-taking, political impact, 
economical impact, strategic planning, different kinds of, diploma of diplomacies, forward-looking analysis, loyalty, identity, institutional character, and so on. So the fourth and third building make the two programs, the traditional program on one side and the non-traditional program on the other side. And the foundation has the same as well. The characteristics of the individual who would like to make the social change and the characteristic of the organization would like to make the social change. So now we have inside our drawing four buildings, two foundation buildings and two sets of groups. Each one of them is consistent, similar pillars. One on the left and one on the right. Okay. So number C, which you can see it actually on the drawing, I'll go back to the top, which is the outcome, which is the outcome of this interaction between the four buildings. The four buildings have to synchronize their action to produce number five, which is what's next. What's next depends on the interaction inside the four components of the structure of this drawing. The philosophy of what's next is number C. The philosophy of what's next policy, what is this? This will be expected, the expected outcome of the interaction management, which is the fifth building, between the institutional foundations, building number one and two, the groups of the pillars, three and four. We have to manage the relationship between these five, four components, which talked about the community related program and fulfilling the contemporary requirements and the applicable program and, 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 and. So we should manage the interaction between the four components of such building to create what's next policy. What's next policy is not a miracle. It's something that we have to manage. How can we control or direct or manage the action of the four components of this structure? It became a compelling necessity on us to follow the above structure and to create this process. Why? To announce that new humanitarian era there's a new humanitarian era that we are going to create. There's a new humanitarian era that we are going to create. They announce the new humanitarian era based on new parameters, culture, manners, philosophies, values, histories, newly developed ideological humanitarian principles, where we become, we become the leaders or at least the effective co-leaders of this era, inshallah. Can't afford to be led by others anymore. Halas. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Drawing this structure in front of you is to create the relationship between the four components to give us what's next to create or to announce, like Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he was left in Mecca, Allah SWT told him, Azdim fin nas. Make announcement, make adhani, Abraham. Now, at this gloomy time, I ask each and every one of you to make this adhan of the new era, for you are becoming the leaders. Or at least you become one of the most effective co leaders of this new era. But not anymore. You stay as somebody led by others. Will we become the leaders or at least the effective co leaders of this era, inshallah? But if, how, if we want to achieve that, we have to find out and discover the different and most relevant tools 
tools, tools to implement the various projects that will enable us to achieve different international dimensions of humanitarian action. Program according to a properly planned roadmaps having crystal clear milestones. I said again, again and again, it became a compelling necessity on us to follow the above structure and to create this process to announce the new humanitarian era based on new parameters, cultures, manners, philosophies, values, histories, and newly developed ideological humanitarian principles where we become the leaders or at least the effective co-leaders of this era. Inshallah. This, in one condition, if we want to achieve that, we have to find out what and discover the different and most relevant tools to implement the various projects that will enable us to achieve different international dimensions of humanitarian action programs according to a properly planned road maps having crystal clear milestones. This was the structure and this was the story of the Qarnain alayhi salam. Go back to the stories in the Quran, you'll discover treasures, treasures, a wealth of treasures. Come back to our meeting on 26th, 28th of July in Istanbul last week. Alhamdulillah, as I mentioned, it was a very successful meeting. New dimension for international humanitarian work. New dimension. 28 or 29 top notch speakers in Istanbul. 17 or more young volunteers and researchers. Spirit, serenity, dedication, love, care made it successful. Let me acknowledge some of the people who were the unsung hero and heroine of this meeting. Razan was the chair of the research group. Dr. Saad was a volunteer and their sister who came from Saudi Arabia on their cost to be supporting the research group. Bayan was the spokeswoman of the, of, of the meeting. Zakaria was working at the back. Fatma Hersi and Hajar were working from UK. Amira was working from uh, Rihaneya in Turkey. Uh, Hamadi Lakhdar was working from Morocco. Uh, we Ahmed Din from Turkey. Ismail Fadal from Turkey. Muhammad El Tahir from Turkey as a Sudanese student. To so those people, are the unsung heroes and heroines. We have to respect them and stand up for them and take our heart for them. For making this 26, 28 is a success story of July. These are some of the logos of our partners, five partners, five small partners, five small partners, no big organization, no big money spent. If you will, 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 will realize the budget for three days, to have hundreds of people on the Zoom and 70 to 80 people inside the room in Istanbul and 28 to 30 very distinguished superstars or mega stars, you would not imagine. It was less than $25,000. I'm just saying it. To tell you success by needing innovation, not by the money, not by giving a star or the boxer or cinema star or just influencer, but to by getting the people who can make the change, by getting the people who can make the change and getting the spirit, the dedication, the commitment of those people. I'm thanking these five organizations for making it happen. Those are some of the stars which came willingly, like Dr. Assam al-Bashir, 
وضح خنفر أسعد طاها دكتور إياب سعد إز إكسلنسي أمباسدر بخيت طال من نام بخيت بروفيسور سيف عبد الفتاح دكتور طارق عفيفي عند عبد الرقيب عباد Another brother, I can't just read his name on the top. Khaled Isa, Muhammad Najd, Marwa Isa, Shahab Al Harifi. All these are superstars. Abd Rabbi bin Saali, Lala Hassu, Sumaim Imani, Friyal Minhas. علاء الزيات محمد طنطاش حكيم حجيج دكتور زياد دكتور حكيم حجيج دكتور زياد حماد خولة العيسى عمار السوادي نجلاء الشيخ أشرف مسلم of course دكتور غسان الكحلوت جمانة أزول أز Country, uh, Muhammad, Muhammad Mahfouz, plus uh, Doctor, of course, Doctor Hebrauf, Professor Hebrauf. All those people came because they want to do something. Because they wanted to do something. They attended this because they have message, they have mission, they have vision, they have aims and objective. They didn't want to sit at home doing nothing. And if you look at these slides, there are some of the participants who attended the meeting, alhamdulillah. And this time, we managed to attract at least more than 15 or 20 young female. Some of them were speakers and were chair of sessions, as you can see on the photograph. My message to young people now, who kept saying that we had a very successful gathering, three days gathering. Now, my message to you young people, what is this? There were 17 young volunteers behind the success of this three days gathering. They have never met before, did not know one another. They were from different backgrounds. Syria, Morocco, Yemeni, Egyptian, Saudi, and Sudanese. Some were physically present inside the meeting room, and the rest were joining us through Zoom and social media. Half of them were not paid. Two paid their own expenses, not travel expenses, and they actually hotel. And the other, the left, three or four of them actually were employees of the organization. There wasn't any time limit for them. Work, working, 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 working. No time limit. And no reward at the same time. No financial reward. No time limit for the work they were doing. And everyone was working according to the parameters of making this gathering a success story. Having less resources, no incentives, no recognition, no praise. They were not working for glamour or image or photo. They were working for the cause and the purpose. Most of the delegates did not know them because those were the unsung hero and heroines. They are showered. They were showered by the spirit of serenity and enthusiasm, declaring one thing, we are announcing the new humanitarian era, that we will be leading it with new humanitarian culture, values, manners, philosophies, ideologies, and histories, where we will be the leaders, or at least becoming the co-effective leader in coordination with others. We are paving the way for a new global humanitarian path. 
young people, you are, you have to believe that you can create the affected and most needed social change, not only on the national level, but on the global level. Let me say it again to confirm it and to put my, thing, my foot down. Most of the delegates did not know them. They were the real unsung hero and heroines. They were showered by the, the spirit of serenity and enthusiasm, declaring Azan, we are announcing the new humanitarian era that we will be leading it with new humanitarian culture, values, manners, philosophy, ideology, and histories. Where will be the leaders, the leaders, or at least becoming the co-effective leader in coordination with others? We are paving the way for a new global humanitarian path. Young people, you have to believe that you can create the effective and most needed social change, not only on national level, but on international level as well. Let us learn, young people, from the swift response of the constellation of those mega stars and leaders and thinkers and philosophers and academics and experts and practitioners and researchers who came because they have, because what? Because they have a message to spread, mission to accomplish, and the vision to achieve their greatest objective which is to begin the new global humanitarian movement. All those mega stars who came, through which they willingly draw a new framework and laid down the entrenched foundation for this new global humanitarian path and for centuries to come. Those leaders, or superstars, or megastars, or thinkers, and others came because they have message. They have mission. They have aims and objectives. And they want to do something. And all of them deliver the same message without coordination, without meeting one another before. Young people, please learn that the world nowadays, during this gloomy and dark period of time, is eagerly looking closely for what you are planning to create of miraculous actions. You are going to create miraculous actions to face the enormous challenges with the simplest solution. And you can do that, inshallah, to face the enormous challenge with the simplest solution. What happened between 26th and 28th of July in Istanbul is a miraculous achievement. Like these miracles that were granted to Allah's messengers and prophets. Allah has seen their hearts and they found inside them serenity, sorry, sincerity, trustworthiness, determination, belief, humility, good intention, and noble manners. So he decided to support them. He knew they were doing all that to make his word is exalted to the highest. And the word of the unbelievers is the lowest. He knew that the prophet and messengers are trying to raise the word of Allah to the highest. And in this meeting 26, 28, you were doing the same, and we were doing the same. Alhamdulillah. Please, young people, remember that your success is an honor, not for me, not for my community, not only for Islam, but for humanity. Remember, young people, please remember that your success is an honor for humanity 
and the stumble for the enemies of those who were working hard against the movement of life, freedom, dignity, pride, and who were raising the newly developed humanitarian principles that does not discriminate against any race, generation, ethnicity, religion, dogma, culture, history, or others. It's clear, young people, I'll say it again, again and again and again, even if people don't listen to me. My duty is to deliver a message. Your duty is either to accept it or to leave. It's entirely up to you. Please, young people, remember that your success is an honor for humanity and a stumble for the enemies of those who were working hard against the movement of life. Freedom, dignity, pride, and who were raising the newly developed humanitarian principles that does not discriminate against any race, generation, ethnicity, religion, dogma, culture, history, and others. Remember, young people, again and again and again, that your success is assembling, not dispersing. Constructive, not destructive. Reforming, not deviating. Creative, not inhibiting. Miraculously making, not prohibiting pioneering. Gathering everyone and not exclusive for certain ones. Establishing justice, providing freedom, not supporting injustice and spreading slavery culture. Say it again. Remember, young people, that your success is assembling, not dispersing, constructive, not destructive, reforming, not, dev not deviating, creative, not inhabiting, miraculous making, not prohibiting pioneering, gathering everyone and not exclusive for certain ones, establishing justice providing freedom, not supporting injustice, and spreading slavery cultures. Young people, you are capable of creating that and more and more and more. And I conclude with a part of the verse of from Surah Yusuf, number 21, and Allah prevails in his affairs, though most people don't know. This was the 26 to 28 meeting in Istanbul. That's why I myself and some all, all everybody was there is very enthusiastic about a new beginning of the year 1444, despite the fact that the added number of 1444 is 13, but we are very optimistic that will make the social positive change which will save humanity from corruption, from injustice, from slavery, from theft, which you can find it happening through the mega companies, to the super powers, to abusing an organization called UN and the others, other organizations. I thank you very much for being patient to listen to me. And thank everybody who was uh, listening to me. And I'll see you next week, inshallah, in Arabic and English, on the feedback from the people who attended the meeting on 26, 28, the comments and the questions. So whoever was with us on this meeting, there's a lot of questions that we received on Zoom and on Facebook, and we'll answer these questions, inshallah, next week. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All the best and happy new Islamic year to everyone and to anyone. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.